Back on the MSG 150 at home presented by Chase, Bill Pito, and Alan Hahn and John Wallace. And it is our pleasure to say hello to former Nick, John Starks. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we know that during John Wallace's rookie year, you and he were teammates on the Knicks. I hope he was a lot better of a teammate with you than he's been with us. <laughs> he actually was great. He was like a, a, a breath of fresh air. Uh, him and that crew that came in, Dante and uh, and Walter, those guys came in and, and really like energized us, to be honest with you. When John first came on the call, J-Dub said hello to him, and John said to him, what's up, kid? Like, he still calls him kid. <laughs> 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 All right, but John, John, pay John starts to say good things about you or what? No, it just it took him 25 years to actually say something good about me, so I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> let, let's, let, let's get to the topic, though, that obviously we've been watching the Last Dance documentary, and, you know, as fans, we watch and remember a lot of things, but, John, you lived it. You were part of it, actually, of course, uh, when they talked about those series that you guys played against, those Bulls, before Jordan left the first time around. As you're watching it, I mean, I'm sure – that. The endings aren't great, obviously, for the Knicks, but are the memories still fun to relive? Oh, they definitely are. Uh, you know, whenever you get a chance to play against someone like Michael Jordan, uh, for me personally, uh, the one-on-one -on -one matchups was fun to me uh, because the level of competition, uh, you know, that he brought every single night, you had to raise your game up. And so, for me, I love – I'm a very competitive, competitive person, as everybody knows. And um, and obviously he was the ultimate competitor uh, to play against. Now, John, there's a couple of people who aren't happy about the last dance. Patrick Ewing being one of them. I, you know, everyone's happy about the last dance, but it's sparking up old old memories and uh, all these old feelings that you had. How are you feeling about the last dance? Because you know, being that you competed against Jordan, you were one of the rare people to have the, the ability to say that you had one up on Jordan. You actually dunked on him, Horace, and that whole thing. But how are you feeling about the last hands? Is it is it bring is is it good for you to watch or is it like man I don't want to watch that because it brings back the memories when you guys lost? No, not at all. I, I enjoyed it, you know. And like I said, I'm a competitor, and you compete against the best, and you want to play against the best. And so, um, what I've been enjoying is just like the insights of uh, Michael Jordan, even more so. You know, uh, when you're playing against him, you know you just in the mix and and you're concentrating on trying to beat them. But you now you really understand what made him such a great player and uh, his passion for the game, his level of, of um, competitiveness uh, that he had uh, during his time. Uh, the one spot that I really enjoyed when uh, he was talking about uh, uh, him uh, and, you know, and he had to take a break. Yeah, I'm not sure if y'all remember that. He had to take a break because he was tearing up. Emotional, yeah. Yeah, he got emotional about it because, I, to me, I'm I'm looking at it and and I'm saying to myself, okay, he feel like people he was misunderstood as a player, and that's what I got out of it. It's like he gave his all uh, to the game and he gave his all to go out there and put on a show every single night and come to compete every single night. And, and the way he pushed his teammates to rise to his level, uh, people took that as, you know, him being, you know what, <laughs> uh, but <laughs> get it as, you know, he was the moon and his players were the stars. You know, the old adage, shoot for the moon, you land, land amongst the stars. It was like he was trying to get them up to his level. John, you guys had so many battles against Jordan's Bulls in the 90s. Any anecdotes that you can share about maybe some of the things that Jordan said in the middle of those games or some of the other Bulls said during those games? Now, remember, this is a rated G program, but maybe you have a good story or two. Uh, no, you know what? People always talk about Michael talking a lot of trash, but he didn't talk a lot of trash out there on the court. He was so focused on his job. Me and him really didn't get into any verbal uh, massive matches uh, because I knew and being the player that I am you don't want to get him riled up he already coming to play but if you start talking noise to him he's going to take you to another uh, another level he's going to take his game to another level I can remember you know doing this is doing when he retired and Scotty Pippen had a uh, all-star uh, benefit game 
in Chicago and he was having a hard time selling uh, tickets. This was in 95, the summer of 95. And um, he talked Michael into playing. And as soon as he announced Michael was playing, the ticket sold out in an hour. United, <laughs> United was that United <laughs> Arena. And I can remember I'm on Michael's team, which I was thankful for that. I'm playing on his team. And Scotty called himself stacking the team against him. And he said before he went out, just give me the ball and move out the way. So <laughs> he was on the court. And everybody gave him the ball. Him and Scotty was one-on-one -on -one for the majority of the whole game. And he lit Scotty up for like 55, 60 points. And went, <laughs> up, <laughs> and went up to him. And, <laughs> game. and mind you, he did, you know, he'd been playing baseball. He stepped out on the court. And uh, he told Scotty, don't you ever blank, blank, <laughs> stack the team against me again. <laughs> But that's you know you get the you get the wit is greatness. That's what made them great. Uh, John, were you laughing? Because I'm glad you brought that part up about how you were careful with when you were out on the court. Not a lot of trash talking went on. And we know over the years he's expressed that he always respected you as as somebody that guarded him. I, I thought you know you guys had that kind of relationship where he did show you respect for the way you played him and how hard you played against him. And yet we saw stories, B.J. Armstrong and uh, Horace Grant, others, the rookie from uh, the Bullets at uh, that time, where he even made up reasons to be motivated to go up against someone. Did you ever have that moment with him where you felt like he's about to snap, I better back off? Because we all know with Reggie Miller, you didn't do that. But with Michael, <laughs> <laughs> but with Michael, uh, it must have been different. But were there, was there a moment, though, where you recall, like, he's about to snap, I better, I better dial it down? Not at all, you know what I mean? Um, Michael, like I said, being a competitor, he liked guys to compete hard and uh, and play play hard against them, you know what I mean? And my mentality was just to go out there on the court and just make him work for every every single thing that he got out there. I never go out there thinking that I was gonna stop him. That, that'd be foolish, you know? All I was trying to do is just make him earn every single thing uh, that he got out there on the court. And then I think that's where the level of respect come from. I wasn't trying to be dirty with him. I think in game number three uh, in 93, uh, where we got into a little scuffle uh, in Chicago, he thought that I was trying to attack his sore wrist. I guess he had a you know problem with his wrist at the time. And I uh, slapped at the ball and hit his wrist by accident. And I think he was so frustrated what was going on, obviously coming off of uh, the big media blitz about him going to Atlantic City the night before game two. And, um, and I think it just kind of boiled over into that whole altercation that we had out there in Chicago. And they ended up kicking me out the game for whatever reason, I'm not sure why, but they kicked me out the game. And I remember, you know, the media coming up to me and, uh, you know, asking me questions about what happened and what have you. And so I just went into, you know, I didn't play against Michael Jordan long enough and I know when he's agitated and he pretty much just agitated over what went down, you know, with the media and, and them reporting that he went to Atlantic City and what have you. And so I can remember uh, Patrick coming to me and uh, the night after that, the, what, that single night and Michael called him and, to, and told him that, tell John I'm sorry for that. You know, he apologized, uh, you know, because he appreciated what I said, you know, out there, because that's all it was. He was just frustrated about what was going on. And um, and I wish he would have said it in person, but, you know, sending it through Big Fella, you know, that, that was good enough. Now, now John, you, you were obviously an all-star at one time, and then, you know, you were benched the year we came, you got you got benched for Allen Houston, and I I thought you handled that admirably. Can you tell us what was your mental makeup in terms of going from being such an integral part of the Knicks and starting and all that, and how was your mindset coming off the bench? Can you mm -hmm. speak on that a little bit? Mm -hmm. Well, I looked at it as that our team improved a great deal. Uh, you know, having you young fellas come in, as well as Allen and and uh, Larry coming to the team. Uh, I felt that we had all the necessary pieces to finally get 
beat the Bulls with Michael. You know what I mean? We did. Because, oh, we did. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. Man. Uh, and, oh. uh, you know, the teams that we had before that was built mainly on defense. You look at the, the guys that we had, we was more of a defensive-minded team that we just going to beat guys down and hold them under 90 and uh, do what we did. But that team that we came in, we was more of an explosive offensive team. Um, having Allen and, and Larry, obviously, um, Larry developed an outside shot, and Allen, obviously, one of the most pure shooters in the game. Uh, that's why I looked at it. It's like, okay, we got the pieces to really handle Chicago this year. And yeah. it was evident uh, in, in game the last game of the season where we beat them. In Chicago, in. we beat them. Yeah. yeah. Because they used to do – they used to come off of our threes because we really wasn't outside shooters at that time. Uh, back in 94, you know, before, leading up to that, I should say. And uh, when Allen got there, he had me, Allen, and, you know, Charlie or uh, uh, Chris Childs on the court, as well as Larry out there at times surrounding Patrick. So they really couldn't double. And they gave uh, Patrick freedom to do what he wanted to do. The biggest shot in the game was when they went to go double Patrick because he was killing them. They swung the ball, swung, swung the it. ball. And I was wide open. And I knocked down the three. I remember know. Van Gundy but, saying, that's how you play basketball. <laughs> 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 remember way, way in the beginning of the season, Jeff was reluctant to have me and Allen out there at the same time on the court at the end of the game. And uh, I got frustrated with that because I was on the bench. And uh, me and Jeff had a little nice little discussion. It was nice. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, put it nicely in in uh, his office and um you know I was right he was wrong and I told him to put Allen out there along with me at the end of the game and we started to obviously roll after that yes, sir. Made that change all right John hey great memories thanks for taking a walk down memory lane with all of us uh, best to you and your family and we'll talk to you soon okay same here you guys take care and be safe appreciate it Jay all, All right, right bro. former Nick John Starks. Up next, we will look back to Mark Messier's first game as a Ranger as we set the stage for what's to come tonight on MSG. And we'll do that when we come back on the MSG 150 at home presented by Chase right after this. 